Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, Monica and I were home for the holidays and we decided to bring our backyard bush hog out to explore the coast of Marin County. Of course, I couldn't pass up the opportunity as Baxter's biological father to embarrass him a little bit. Baxter's got a poo, everyone. But it was also time to shoot some new film. Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm here with Monica. Sorry, that's kind of gross. There's Baxter's poo in the shot. <laughs> Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm here with Monica, Baxter, and we're in the beautiful, scenic, colorful Marin Headlands. So naturally we're gonna be shooting some black and white. Today we're shooting the new Kent Mirror. Kent Mirror already exists in a 35 millimeter version, but they are dropping it for 120 now. Uh, so pretty exciting. Kent Mirror is kind of a more um, budget film stock, I guess you could say. Yeah, let's get the camera loaded and start shooting. That's right. Kent Mirror has been around for a minute in 35 millimeter form. It's definitely a very budget conscious film and the one roll that I shot many years ago was uh, pretty grainy. So without a doubt, I was curious to see if the 120 version would be similar. I loaded up the Makina with Kent Mirror 100 in direct bright ass light from the nuclear furnace in the sky yet again, because following directions is for nerds. That's why I always add an hour to the ETA when I use Google Maps. Cool, I can probably just edit that to make it look like I Nailed it on the first try. What do you think? Hell yeah. It's really hard, I think, to review a black and white film stock. At the end of the day, what can you really say about a black and white film? What sets it apart? Grain? Ability to push process? I'd be willing to bet that if you took Ilford's complete lineup and did a blind test, most people wouldn't be able to tell a lot of the stocks apart. I know I would have some trouble. So then what makes Kent Mir so special? That's what I'm tasked with finding out today as we explored some luxury World War II condominiums. Oh, this is kind of cool. This camera is really not intuitive. Done. We lifted Baxter up onto the ledge to show him just how tall he might have been if he had normal legs. And I decided to pop off a portrait of Monica and the boy which I think turned out great. So, first impressions of Kent Mir 100. Yep, it's definitely black and white. <laughs> Gotta say, this Kent Mir 100 is pretty smooth overall. You don't really see the grain too much. Which might be a result of the huge 6x7 negative, or maybe 100 ISO is just low enough to keep the grain nominal. Either way, I dig it. Additionally, it's really flat in profile. It'd probably be a great film to push to 400, but it's not really something I'm into. If you're super into it, don't worry. I'm not here to kink shame you. But if you're not into it, just add contrast and post, like I did. Because after all, I like my images just like my coffee. I don't like coffee. If fixing it in post isn't your thing either, then f it. Just leave it flat. Embrace chaos. After all, no one cares and life is bull. Here's a before and after I added contrast for your reference. Anyway, amongst the writings of some of the greatest philosophers of our generation, I took several photos and I like them well enough. You're not gonna go in? Ow. <laughs> so what is Camir? For starters, it's kind of a sub-brand of Ilford. Kent Mir is more or less Ilford's budget line of film stocks as opposed to the premium stuff like FP4 and HP5. It's kind of like what Ultramax is to Portra 400. It's kind of like what the front of a mullet is to the back of a mullet. But what is the actual difference at the end of the day when it's all boiled down in Original Recipe 4 Loco or whatever's in these developer bottles? Apparently silver. Kent Mir is made in a very similar way to a lot of Ilford's more premium stocks, except that it uses less silver overall to keep the price a little more cost effective. After firing off Baxter's official about the author portrait, I headed down to find a few compositions and polished the Kent Mir 100 off. Anyway, after Baxter crop dusted me, did he fart? Maybe. I thought it'd be cool to try out some Kent Mir 400, which is two stops faster than Kent Mir 100. 
Lovely, Baxter. This is a place of zen. Actually, not really. It's actually kind of a place of horror. Change the ISO, 400. This image is very busy. I think it would have been better suited for Kentmere 100. The lower ISO allowing me to open up the aperture a little more and separate the subject from the background with defocus. That was easy. So, in my own opinion, Kentmere 400 seems to be a wildly different film stock than Kentmere 100. Okay, wildly is a bit dramatic. Lomo Purple is wildly different than Portra 400. Kentmere 100 and 400 are marginally different. At box speed, 400 is incredibly flat. Flatter than 100. And there's just a lot of gray. And the grain is definitely more visible. I guess that's to be expected in a higher ISO film, but the flatness itself kind of boggles me a bit. Here's a reference of the original scan versus how much contrast I added myself in post. I also noted that the density of the physical negatives on 100 seemed significantly better than 400 did overall. Both stocks do not seem to curl too badly either. Kentmere 400 actually seems like it'd be a good film stock to push two stops to 1600. Our fearless film shaman Trev actually pushed it to 3200 with pretty good results. So go check that out if you're insane and actually considering doing that. This shot of, I guess, basically a garage is kind of cool. I like the little sailboat in the background, and honestly, Kentmere was able to hold on to those highlight details pretty well. What does the pan in Kentmere Pan 400 stand for? It stands for pancake. Okay, one day I'll stop blatantly lying to you, but today isn't that day. Pan actually stands for panchromatic, which is the counter to orthochromatic. If a black and white film is orthochromatic, it means it's not sensitive to red light. If a black and white film is panchromatic, it means that it's sensitive to the entire range of visible light. Most black and white film stocks are panchromatic, unless otherwise noted. half of a stop darker. Great. Yep, this shot is blurry because I was using a low shutter speed for some reason I cannot fathom. Anyway, as we forced Baxter to climb what was basically Mount Kilimanjaro to him with his tiny legs, I started thinking, maybe there is something to Kentmere after all. Since it's pretty grainy, maybe 120 is the superior format for Kentmere. With substantially more image definition, the grain kind of falls to the wayside a little bit, and the image returned is quite pleasant overall. It's the last one. Do you hear that kid? Kid was like, why does it smell like old people here? <laughs> Furthermore, could this be a hit film stock if it was available in even bigger sizes, like large format sheets? I asked the Ilford representative who reached out to me, and he said they wouldn't rule it out in the future, but only if it could be at a better price point than HP5 and FP4, which makes sense. Ultimately, I'm not too sure how I feel about this trend of companies introducing new film that's actually just a film stock already available but in a different format. I like having options, and I'm sure you do too. But it's kind of like when Kodak reintroduced gold for 120. Cool. I'm sure we all have a long list of other Kodak stocks we'd like to see them bring back instead. In the case of gold, it's kind of a gut punch to someone like me who's been drinking basically rat poison in a campaign to get Kodak to bring back Aerochrome. What do I have to do? Raise the stakes? Butt chug it? 
Maybe. To be fair though, that's entirely different. That's Kodak. If Ilford wants to stick to black and white film, that's fine. They're great at it. HP5 is god tier and Kentmere 400 is not far behind. But to me, in a way, it kind of feels like a ceiling has been hit. It's hard to imagine where Ilford could potentially go with new black and white film stocks. So I guess what I'm saying is, Maybe it's time to do color, Ilford. I understand it's a whole different beast entirely. You can't just add food coloring and, I don't know, Crown Royal or something to a black and white film stock and get a color negative. I mean, you guys even have a color film page on your website sitting around ready for action. And I think we all know building a website is the hardest part of the process. But you know what? It doesn't have to be with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Yep, you guessed it. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that allows you to customize and grow your website as creatively as you possibly can. Let's face it, 2022 is coming to an end. If you don't already have a website for yourself, or your business, you're losing out on a major opportunity to display your personal brand to the world. As a photographer, I've been using Squarespace for several years now, and I've found it simply to be the easiest solution for building a website because of its intuitive user interface that allows me to customize my site to the fullest extent of my creativity, as well as hundreds of professionally designed template options to start building from. I even recently revamped my entire website from the ground up, and it was incredibly straightforward. But if you're like me and don't know the first thing about building a website, then worry not. Squarespace has you covered with 24-7 award-winning customer support and an online forum for questions or feedback. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. It smells like fish also. Yeah, it smells like fish by the ocean. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, any closing thoughts? Um, the moon is really tiny tonight. I wouldn't say tiny. I would say adequately sized. It's, it's enough for most people. It's barely there, but it is there. I I was satisfied by how much it's there. So, will I ever shoot Camp Mirror in 120 ever again? Yeah, of course. It's cheap, and I'm not really too picky about black and white film stocks. <sighs> will this be the last time I ever use this camera? We'll see. It is kind of a pain in the ass. According to a representative for Ilford, the MSRP in the US for this film is gonna be $5.80, which is pretty budget friendly. To be honest, I don't think most consumers will be able to tell the difference between this and HP5. So shoot some chem here and save some pennies. F it, go hog wild. Entropy is real and we don't know when this is all gonna come crashing down anyway, so might as well live it up. Both chem 100 and 400 are solid, 10 out of 10 or whatever you want me to say. If you want something with a little bit more contrast and are too afraid of the raw power available at your fingertips in Lightroom, then I guess shoot something else or push process it. Just don't say that Ilford never did nothing for you.